The Orange Box, one of the greatest deals in gaming. Half-Life 2, one of the most important games of all time. It's follow-up, Episode 1. Episode 2, a brand new game. Portal, a revolutionary game. Team Fortress 2, an online game people are still playing 16 years on. On consoles, this was a big deal, but on PC, it ushered so many people to use Steam. And today, I don't think that platform would be anywhere near as big as it is without the Orange Box. But, do any of these games actually matter? No! There was a much more important sixth game that everybody forgets. This is the time that Valve tried pegging, baby. With all PC purchases of the Orange Box came Peggle Extreme. This is more intense than Peggle Knights. This is extreme pegging! Buckle in, boyo! Nowadays, this is a free-to-play game for everyone, but back then, it snuck its way into the orange box, so technically, it should be mentioned alongside Half-Life, Portal, and Team Fortress. So, what the heck is this? That's G-Man in the sun. Why are you there? Peggle Extreme is pretty much a demo for full-on Peggle. There's only 10 levels, but all of them are themed around Valve games. That's Bjorn, with a minigun. They've strapped a weapon to the unicorn. He's coming for you, Heavy! Run! Heavy, no! Don't be a hero! They have both victory and failure voice clips straight from the games too. And weirdly, Counter-Strike is in here. And by the way, PopCap, not sure you looked, but Counter-Strike is not in the orange box! We all know the orange box is Half-Life 2, Episode 1, Episode 2, Portal Team Fortress 2, and Peggle Extreme, not Counter-Strike! Huh! It's pretty funny, though. <laughs> But what if you've never been pegged before? Well, it's quite an addictive little thing. You need to hit all the orange balls on the board with your balls and watch them all ricochet around and bounce off each other. And when you hit a ball, it disappears for the next round. So it slowly gets smaller and smaller and you keep going until all the orange balls are gone. You get bigger points the longer the ball stays in play and get bonuses for things like landing a long distance bounce. Good shot! Oh, hey, Heavy. There's a little bit of story with monsters invading the Pegland, and you've got to fend them off. We've got stages like a Vortigaunt here, attacking a little Peggle fella. This one's got a Hunter. This one's got a friendly little headcrab. Then you've got to fight them off with a Team Fortress Sentry, blow them to smithereens in Counter-Strike, and even use portals. This is the only game mechanic to really translate to Peggle, but it's still really cool. And if you manage to clear it all, you get a victory screen that looks like it's from 1996, but no, it's from 2007. I really need an explanation for this. Why is his face there? Are you from Teletubbies, G-Man? What are you doing there? But there's a little more to hook you into a peg addiction. The base game is pretty easy, but there's four bonus challenges that you probably won't do on your first try. It's honestly really, really good, and it's utterly bizarre that such a light-hearted, all-ages series would cross over with a game about an alien invasion. Bjorn has a headcrab on the main menu. I- what happened? Really though, this just reminded me how much I like Peggle. It's made me just want to go ahead and try the Switch version. Oh. What do you mean the last game was nine years ago? And the last non-mobile game was a decade ago on Xbox? Peggle 2 isn't even on PC. The premier Peggle platform. At least we have an excuse to watch how this game was announced again. Thanks. Thanks, guys. That was, that was amazing. Thanks so much. I'd say I was speechless, but I have one more thing to announce. Coming this year, Peggle 2! <laughs> I am 100% confident this title was not in development until this guy ran on stage and gave them no choice but to make it. We should do this more often, like just go on stage and say, F-Zero is in development. Miyamoto will have no choice but to make that game. I want more Peggle. What the hell is this? Not only is there an orange box Peggle, but there's also a World of Warcraft Peggle, and it's just as offbeat as the other one. Unlike Valve's one though, you don't just get Bjorn. 
Each level is like leveling up a character, and once you've done five levels as Bjorn, you get Splork! And this guy's got a different special making things explode! There's some very unpeggled designs, there's a Leroy Jenkins joke in the background, you know this is from 2009. And honestly, the difficulty here is quite a bit higher than the Valve one. We've got stuff like moving pegs, whereas the pegging is static in Valve's version. This was also a free game, and it still kind of is, but you can't actually access it anymore without an archive link. Takes a while to load. There it is! These were the only two Peggle spin-offs, but I wish they did more. I want to peg Mario, Master Chief, heck, imagine pegging Kratos! I want to peg at all times. Peggle DS did not release in Europe, but I don't care what the man says, I'm pegging in the UK! I'm gonna peg on the bus in public, you can't stop me, man! And there was technically a seventh game in the orange box, I know someone's gonna leave that comment, Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. A scrapped level from the Half-Life 2 campaign that was somewhat made playable, but was more made to be a tech demo. It's to show the HDR capabilities of the Source engine, and honestly, it still looks really good today. But it's no Peggle Extreme. Did I make this entire video because the word Peggle sounds a bit like pegging? Yeah. But I want to call every fake Half-Life fan out. Yeah. You may have played every game in the series. Yeah, you may have played the PlayStation 2 port containing an exclusive multiplayer mode with exclusive characters and exclusive storyline tying it into the main campaign. But if you've not played this Peggle board shaped like a headcrab, you're not a real fan. And I'm gonna shout at you in the streets.